Hello everybody and welcome back to Ozymandias, the conquest of the outer planets. And as you may remember, we are still in orbit around Sarnus and we are in need for a lander. We are also in need for more fuel. So that is the reason why the ship on that beautiful scenery that you've just seen is heading towards Ovok. Ovok, of course, being the second smallest moon of Sarnus, smallest being Hale, which is basically just a big asteroid. So we're setting up some maneuver noting, and yeah, I'm gonna skip through that, that's really boring for you to watch. So here we are once again setting up for another maneuver. Lining up, there's Slate in the background, and Elu as well. Yeah, we're gonna get to you, icy little critter very soon or well soon soon in episode time not in game time because that will be years look at that the crew is looking outside and having a blast and also blasting the engines so we can get our ovok encounter well the name ovok also already implies something well the thing is Ovok is shaped, yeah, you can see it here, like an egg. And this has, well, quite some implications. One is, since there is not really, well, you could, you could not really call it highest or lowest point of elevation, you really have to be careful about where you place your apoaps and periaps. I found that something around 20 kilometers is okay. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Once more changing my orientation so that the solar panels can get the full blown up sun photons that they can get. Even though Sarnus was in the way for a little while. And there it is! Hi Ovok! And hi Elu and hi Slate! A nice family picture. So we're setting up our maneuver node. Just some little reaction wheel business going on. And there we go. Retrograde burn set up. And yeah, we're going to spend some of our fuel reserves to do that, but that cannot be avoided. And while we're at it, why not grab some science? So since all the science package was on the lander, we can only go for the crew report and for the EVA report. But yeah, well, it's better than nothing. So here we go. Burning, 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 burning. The nuke engines, the six nukes are burning over time. Because they have to slow us down. Since Ovok has such low gravity, you really need a lot of delta V to get in orbit, because otherwise you would just zip past it. Well, a lot. It depends on where you're coming from. If you're already in almost a synchronous orbit, then it is a lot easier, but yeah. Just some Newtonian physics stuff that I'm not good at. I wish I were. I'm not... Uh, Astronomer like Scott Manley or some other uh, YouTube geeks that really know what they're talking about. I just like to build big stuff and fly it in space. So yeah, we're doing some more science and we're transferring that science to the lab. So that was our commander Stelnitsa Kerman. And yeah, so now we are in orbit around that planet. We have to get down there somewhere. And this is going to be tricky because, well, you may know, since Ovok has such a high uh, self-rotation, this is not going to be easy because the surface is shifting away from your point of view and since it has such a low gravity, you get down there really slowly. So it really can happen that your 
intended landing place is completely somewhere else. But wait a second, wait a second, before we land down there, let's check if there is at least any ore. Otherwise, it would not make sense for us to land there. So that's where this probe is coming in. It is consisting completely of uh, monopropellant engines and some batteries and some tiny fuel cells for good measure. So we have to set up a polar orbit. And once we're good, we're going to scan for some resources. And here we are in our polar orbit. We're scanning for ore down there on the surface. And of course we have to transmit that data. And once we know that, we have to look at where a suitable landing place is. And so it appears that the polar region and that big dark spot there on one of the sides of the egg are some kind of, well, locations where it would make sense to set the Ozymandias down and drill there. But now we have to get the lander, well, not the lander, the resource probe back there to the Ozymandias. Which we did. So I skipped through that rendezvous maneuver routine and we're already in close proximity to our target. Now it's just time to get that thing back into the cargo bay, dock it and close down the four monopropellant tanks so that they won't drain if I ever turn on the RCS system of the Ozymandias itself. Don't bump into the radiators, I'm going to need those later on. And boom, there we go. So yeah, as I mentioned before, I have to shut down those monopropellant tanks, disable crossfeed for good measure, and then we're good to go to, well, get down to the surface. So we have to get to the dark patch over there. But before we do that, let's check back on the Julish car. Here she is! And we have done some extensive time warping. And due to that extensive time warping, we have now reached our transfer window. So the most suitable time to uh, execute a maneuver to transfer to Sarnus. So you see that big white tank in the back? That is going to be dropped during that burn, probably. I don't expect to drag it with me towards the outer planets. But, well, let's see how efficient this thing is. Those radiators up front, it looks like a big propeller. Like from a ship's turbine or something. So where does this drain? It does not drain from the after tank so I have to well I have to do some fuel transferring while I burn towards the maneuver node yay the fun so you can see here those tanks are already emptying and that in the back isn't so I have to transfer it all the way to and fro and I have to make sure that I catch every tank that is being drained otherwise I will drop the tank later than it's really necessary and that is excess weight that I do not want to drag. But we skipped ahead a little bit because that burn really takes time. And there it goes. Goodbye little tank. Okay now, we are performing our burn admirably. The Julishka after 9 years of service or even more now. 10 years of service, or 12, I don't know, many years, is still capable after all those upgrades and is once again on her way towards a planet outside of Kerbin's sphere of influence. So you've seen the thermal overlay, things are getting quite hot, I'm glad I'm not only put the three radiators up top, but also those tiny ones in the back, and we got our encounter! 
So after we got the encounter, I've set up another maneuver node a little bit later on to adjust the orbit. So I would get a gravity assist off of Slate. So if that planet is good for nothing but destroy landers, then it maybe can help us get the new lander back to the Ozymandias. So you can see me here burning away. Burning away our precious liquid fuel. But I think we're doing fine and we're going to have a safe rendezvous with the Ozymandias. So final burn. Adjusting. Yeah, that was maybe too much, but we are going to fine adjust that later on. But while the Julishka is transferring to Sarnus, which takes, of course, some more years again, we are going to get down to Ovok. So you can see me here aiming for, well, a little bit further away than the ore rich area. But as I mentioned before, since Ovok has such high uh, self rotation, I'm going to land smack in the middle of it as things appear. So the plan is to use the nukes. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? If I have to stop the mission just after Sarnas, I would still be satisfied because this is such a beautiful mod and I really love it. So, as I said before, I'm trying to use the nukes as long as I can and then I'm going to do the final landing burn with my radial engines, the THUD engines. So, for security measures I'm packing in everything, the radiators and also the solar panels so that nothing will come in contact with the spiky surface. So, Owok is a little bit treachery treacherous because it looks really smooth from far away but as you can see here once you get closer it has a lot of jagged edges so yeah maybe a little bit like a real egg would look under a microscope or something I don't know maybe that was the intention here Nevertheless, this makes landing a little bit more challenging, but it's okay. Since the surface gravity is so low, you can basically adjust it with your RCS thrusters where you land without any problem. So, my landing lights, which toggle uh, with the same key, the same action group key that my uh, radial engines toggle. Just turned it off, don't know why. Well, let's turn it back on. And boom! We have touched down on Ovok. And yeah, gravity is so low that the thing does not want to stay still. So let's head somewhere where it's a little bit flatter. Stay still, please. Yes! Look at that! We are on Ovok. On the egg. So let's extend the radiators, let's extend our drills and start drilling. And also let's start producing our fuel. Because of course, uh, once we meet the Julishka, I plan to give her something back in return. And that is fuel, of course. And she needs a lot of it. Um, something about 19,000 units or so. The Ozymandias can carry about 21,000 units of fuel. So this should be okay that I uh, refuel the Julishka for her way back to Kerbin. And yes, I intend to save her as well, because after such an admirable job, it is only fair to uh, get her back home and keep her maybe for another mission. So once more enjoying the scenery, the captain has planted a flag and also collected a surface sample. So now we're waiting for the Julishka to return. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.